It is overtime here again at Old Favorite Friday, and we are continuing the conversation about a beer that, I mean, just screams craft beer culture to me, screams my past in uh, trying to identify these whales, these beers that were so hard to get, so sought after that they were just mythical beers that you couldn't get your hands on, and that is Black Tuesday by the brewery. Uh, this is a beer that is a 19% bourbon barrel imperial stout. It was released for the first time way back in 2009, to the best of my understanding. And very quickly, this beer became a legendary in beer circles. Uh, I was not a trader myself, but I had a lot of friends of mine. I don't know if you guys know this, if you're not part of that culture, but trading beer was a huge thing uh, back in the day when the craft beer scene was really getting started. Still continues to be to this day, uh, where people would do uh, beers that they were available to from their area of the country. They would trade to other people. And there was a whole community, a whole uh, commerce uh, that came out of this where you know beers like this would be worth hundreds of dollars to get your hands on straight up or you could trade for other rare beers in your area. Uh, back in the day, we were very lucky because we had uh, some like Cigar City and Hunapu that we could trade all over the country and my friends would get their hands on these. So I, I ran in circles of traders that never really traded a lot myself. Uh, but this was one of those beers that I couldn't wait to get my hands on the first time. This along with stuff like Kate the Great, Dark Lord, uh, Black Ops by Brooklyn, uh, just to, to name a few, but there was many, many other ones. But this was like kind of in the big three for me. This is an imperial style, as I said, Asian and bourbon barrels. is a massive beer at 19%. It is super rich. Uh, the one thing I will point out about this beer, in a culture that really seems to, especially in the uber beer nerd culture, that seems to so value adjuncts and really overly sweet, under-attenuated imperial stouts, this, for 19%, and for the residual sugar it has, and it does have some, it's, it's not a bone dry beer by any stretch of the imagination, but it still is insanely drinkable uh, at this ABV and with this residual sugar in there. That means that the malts have balanced it out. Any hops they have in there have balanced out some of the sweetness. So it's not just cloying. Uh, a lot of those adjunct laden, uh, really under attenuated imperial stouts, I would never pour myself that much of a beer like that because I'd be kind of tired of it after one or, two, one or two sips. Whereas this, I'm going back in, I'm getting actually a little acidity there. I'm getting uh, a little bit of roast bitterness as well, which is really, it's making sure that this is not a one note beer that is just hitting the same flavor over and over again. There's complexity, there's nuance here. And what kind of flavors are we talking about? Yeah, that roast, that bitter chocolate flavor. I mean, dried figs, uh, like a kind of a creme brulee caramel kind of flavor, molasses, you know, all these layered flavors of dark fruit, roasted malts, and, and things of that nature really uh, make an incredible beer. And a beer that I still think uh, holds up all this time later. I picked this bottle up. I was lucky enough. I was in uh, Tampa with my son for our baseball game. I popped into a Total Wine and More, and this was like one bottle sitting on the shelf. And I was so excited because I you know, always wanted this beer to be featured on Old Favorite Friday. I'd never had a chance to get my hands on that beer in, in many, many years. This is a 2023 version. Uh, for all those of you that don't know, you can age this beer. You can put this down in your cellar. You can age it three to five years, uh, no doubt. Uh, I know one of my partners, Bill McPhee, over here at Barrel of Monks, he probably has 700 bottles of this uh, going back to before this beer was even brewed uh, for the first time somehow because uh, he has you know vintage beers that he's put down for a long time. So you can do something like that and kind of try the vertical over time and see how it kind of evolves and changes uh, in general, which is a really fun thing to do. A lot of Belgian beers you can do that with, Imperial Stouts, big hefty beers. Don't do that with IPAs. There's no real no reason to do that. But for beers like this, you can absolutely do that. Uh, this uh, The brewery is a fantastic brewery uh, that's been around for a long time. Pioneers in the really kind of high-end craft beer culture, you know, doing bottle conditioning, uh, doing beers in uh, really beautiful packaging that kind of heightened the level of how craft beer was perceived from being like that kind of uh, poor man's luxury to being a, a kind of bottle that can be $50, $60 on a, on, a, on a beer list at a bar and people wouldn't bat an eye at. And that's really, really important. I think that we should be respecting beers like this and not just this beer, but many, many other craft beers because uh, they are so good with food, because they are like this that they're at least once a year and in small quantities. And they should really be respected and appreciated like you would a fine wine. And, and the brewery has done as much to help the craft beer industry with that as anybody else. Uh, speaking of beer and food pairings with this, I mean, I'm thinking steak. 
I'd want to get a fattier cut of steak, something like a porterhouse, New York strip, and something I'd love to see with this to kind of lean into some of the roasty flavors. The roast isn't over the top here, but it's definitely there. I do like a coffee rub with a lot of black pepper, coffee, and possibly even something like some chipotle pepper, something with a little bit of spice because those mole kind of flavors go well with an imperial stout. I, I do, uh, do a grilled steak with that kind of rub. I top it with a, some gorgonzola cheese, maybe bake that a little bit uh, to caramelize the top of that in the oven. I think that those flavors together uh, really, when you're talking about the, the, the chipotle pepper, the coffee, black pepper to kind of balance out some of the sweetness and gorgonzola cheese, really good blue cheese, I should say as well. Uh, really, really good with Imperial stuff. So, I mean, that would be an incredible pairing if you've got the patience and time to go do that. If you could pick up a bottle of Black Tuesday, I highly recommend give that a shot or other Imperial stouts can go really well. But I like the idea of that flavor combination with a beer like this, it's really kind of over the top in body and richness and has a little bit of residual sweetness because some of those flavors in there will balance out that sweetness a little bit and make it even more elegant and bring out more of the flavors in the beer. Beer brings out flavors in the food. Uh, thank you guys very much for sticking with me and uh, checking out Black Tuesday. Uh, if you can't get a bottle of Black Tuesday uh, re regularly and you don't have one in your cellar, I understand that. It's a yearly release. It's in small quantities. But anything from the brewery, uh, you're going to be really, really happy. I think we fe featured uh, Mischief here uh, before on Old Favorite Friday. And a lot of the beers that uh, Autumn Maple and things of the, from the past, I'm not even sure if they still produce them. If they do and I can get my hands on them, you'll be seeing them here on Old Favorite Friday. Uh, keep letting us know what we should be featuring uh, in coming weeks. Please keep poking around and seeing other videos where we talk about incredible classic beers, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.